Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. So if you guys want to start crowding around, we do have some room over here on the right. Feel free to move to that side as well so you can see. All right, good morning. Welcome, it's an exciting day at Bowling Green. I'm Vincent Bradis, Assistant AD for Strategic Communications. And uh, we are standing here in the Stroh Center on the campus of Bowling Green State University for the Dennis Williams Introductory Press Conference. So the order of events will be uh, President Rogers will speak, followed by AD Derek Vandermeer, and then followed by new head coach Dennis Williams. Uh, after that, there'll be a short Q&A over here uh, for the media. Following the formal press conference, we will move uh, Coach Williams. And if you have questions for either uh, Derek Vandermeer or President Rogers, we'll have some uh, one-offs. Just uh, let us know, please. And so at this time, to get started, I would like to introduce the 12th president of Bowling Green State University, President Rodney Rogers. Vincent, thank you very much, and uh, it's wonderful to be here. I just wanted to spend a few moments uh, to thank you all for being here and uh, to say a few words about the importance of BGSU hockey, men's ice hockey. And we have our team here, so thank you, gentlemen, for being here, and so many community members and campus community members that are here today. Uh, but I know you want to hear from these two gentlemen on my right, so I'm not going to have a lot to say other than this. Uh, men's hockey at Bowling Green State University uh, is, a gr uh, uh, is a program that is uh, rich in, in history and legacy. Uh, I was a student at Bowling Green in the early 80s, and I remember, uh, you know, you could not get a ticket to a game. Uh, and uh, started my professional career up in Toledo, worked there for quite a few years when in 84 uh, this program won a national championship. And, and there's only 64 Division I men's ice hockey teams in the entire country. There's only three in this state, and there's only one that has ever won a national championship in the state of Ohio, and it's men's hockey here at Bowling Green State University. And that's why this program, uh, I think, means so much to the university, but it means so much to the community and, and really uh, to the broader region uh, as the only uh, Division I men's hockey program in Northwest Ohio. And uh, hockey is uh, it's a great sport. I think uh, any, any of us, and, and I see so many of these faces that I see all the time at uh, the Slater Family Ice Arena. Uh, this program also uh, is, is really in a position to build upon all that great legacy and heritage to take that next step forward. And that is why this uh, hire was so important to this university. We are poised to have amazing success here. Amazing success at the university. We're hitting metrics around student success and enrollment and fundraising and all of those sorts of things. But what we know is athletics is the way that brings people together, brings community together. It brings the brand and the reputation of this institution forward. And it's a good time for men's hockey, obviously, for this fall when we uh, open a renovated Slater Family Ice Arena. And uh, I, I can't tell you how, excited that's, uh, how exciting that's going to be. And Scott, uh, thank you for being here today and for all of your support of the men's ice hockey program here at Bowling Green. Eh, give him a round of applause, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> But I know we have so many other individuals who have contributed and have, and I, I invite you to join us in, and join Scott in continuing to support that great legacy of this program. So with that said, uh, I want to also make sure I thank uh, Derek Vandermeer. Uh, Derek, um, as our AD, uh, knew how important the search was, and I appreciate uh, everything he poured into this search. Uh, East Coast, West Coast, North, South, all over, looking for the individual who could uh, continue to build on this great legacy 
Um, and we were looking for a coach, obviously, that had high standards, who had, had the ability to be very successful and had proven that uh, in terms of being a head coach, that would build the culture and the reputation of this institution and these student athletes and support them in their success. And uh, I think we found the guy, and uh, we are very fortunate. But Derek, thank you very much for all of your hard work that allowed us to uh, successfully recruit the ninth coach of the uh, Falcons of the BGSU men's ice hockey program. Coach Williams, it's great to have you back at home here at Bowling Green. We are looking forward to the next legacy, the next chapter of this storied program. Coach Williams, welcome home. Isaac Izumba. Um, thank you for all attending. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be a part of today's announcement. Uh, Dr. Rogers and the Bowling Green Board of Trustees, thank you for your commitment and ongoing support of our programs and your, um, the personal investment that you make in all of our programs. It's not just about lip service. He attends, he's at events, he cares about our student athlete experience greatly. Nothing more than through this process of making sure that he reiterated that we get the right person to lead this program. I'd like to thank Turner's of the Collegiate Sports Associates, Marcelliona, for your assistance with the search process. Um, highly qualified uh, uh, individuals that I've worked with um, time and time again who I just really appreciate their discipline of how they approach these processes. Uh, Stacy Kosiak, uh, Deputy AD, a very critical and important partner. Uh, too many early morning meetings, too many late, late night meetings, but she's always available and has been a great asset through these processes, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, throughout these processes, I can tell you one thing. I'm going to make one correction to what uh, Dr. Rogers said. It was um, East Coast, West Coast, North never went south. I just couldn't find the hockey in the south. Um, but I became very fluent in the Canadian accent, I assure you that much. Um, also, during this process, I have consulted and discussed ideas with some of the greatest minds in Bowling Green hockey history and in hockey period. Uh, Jerry York, Wayne Wilson, Rob Blake, Kevin Bieksa, Brian McKellen, Dan Bialsma, Mike Pickle, Andrew Hammond, Darcy McConvey, and the list goes on and on of these people that I could just pick up a phone, I could call and ask them for advice, for recommendations, how to think about this. I'm not the expert at everything, I'll never claim to be, but I know one thing, I have amazing people at this university and its history and its past that have helped me to understand how to approach, how to think about how to best represent this brand each and every day, and I'm so fortunate and lucky to have those individuals in my life. I'd like to thank our advisory board uh, for their care, their interest, their investment in this program. Um, our advisory board, we have Scott Slater here today, um, Andrew Hammond, Dar Darcy McConvey, uh, Mike Natashak, Joe Quinn, Bill Conowich, um, individuals that we meet uh, with our programs um, every month. We talk about direction, vision, direction, perspective, a uh, great asset to where we're going uh, with this hockey program. On Monday, March 11th, 18 days ago, I made the decision to make a leadership change in our hockey program. I'd like to take a moment to thank our former head coach, Ty Eigner, for his commitment and service to Bowling Green State University and to this great community for over 19 years. First as a student athlete, then a coach. Thank you for your tireless commitment to hockey, and thank you for everything you've done for these student athletes in this community. We truly appreciate you for your service. I met with our hockey team on March 12th and asked them what they wanted to see in their next head coach. As I was walking to that meeting with Stacy, Stacy asked me, how long do you think this meeting's gonna go? Because when you meet with a team, you, you know sometimes it can take some time. And I said, well, Stacy, let me tell you something. This team has a 3.65 cumulative grade point average in there, and close to, close to half the team are MBA students. I think it's going to be a very short meeting. It's going to be concise and know exactly what they want. Sure enough, I walked into the meeting. The meeting took 30 seconds, and they said two things. We want someone who respects this team, and we want someone who respects the staff um, and the people that they are. Um, and that was something I heard. Thank you very much for the feedback. And that is the most efficient meeting I've ever been in in my entire life with student athletes. So thank you for your time. Um, the university strategic plan is called Ford, for the public good. The athletics department is in its final stages of its plan. And it's called Ford Falcons, fight to victory. Our plan is to align our mission, our vision, our purpose with the movement 
the momentum, the progress, and the achievements of this great university. Under President Rogers' leadership, the university is growing and thriving. It is highly competitive in ever-changing landscape of higher education. It has differentiated itself as an institution that is committed to the student experience, teaching quality, highly relevant academic programming, something that is moving the university forward. Our fundamental purpose for Falcons Forwards will be a relentless commitment to improvement, innovation, and success in each one of our sport programs. Improvement is our commitment to always moving forward, a daily commitment to getting better. Innovation is a commitment to taking challenges on in competitive, in competitive spaces. Regardless of what's happening in higher education and sports, our teams will excel. We'll find people that are innovative, creative, that differentiate us. Success is our commitment to winning on the ice and in the classroom. So, Falcon Ford. Today, I have the honor of introducing the next head coach who will move this program forward. I first met Dennis Williams on a Zoom call on March 14th at 4.45, very important date and time. Why? Our men's basketball team had just defeated Central Michigan University in the first round of uh, the tournament, and I ran back to my hotel room to jump on a call with Dennis Williams. I was elated after the great, great win, and uh, you know, having walked in there, I had received, you know, I knew Dennis was special, and I was excited for this phone call. Four or five people had reached out to me and said, this is someone you have to talk to. It was clear Dennis was special. His energy, passion, and clear vision for building a great hockey program was clear. I started researching his background, a gold medal, a gold medal winning head coach for Canada at the 2023 World, Champ uh, World Junior Championships, a 702 winning percentage at the WHL um, Everett Silver Taps, uh, Western Conference Coach of the Year twice, 11 NHL draftees, seven 17 year head coaching career over a, a 544, 267 and 14 record, a proven track record and he just happened to be an alum. Amazing. Okay, I need to know more. I spent the next week talking to people around the country, finding out who Dennis Williams truly is. He's passionate, he's committed, he's caring, he's a man of integrity, he's gritty, he's hard-nosed, high expectations, tough, a strong leader, someone who has demonstrated success in multiple and challenging environments, always rising to the top, a leader, that former players who have gone on to play in the NHL admire and care about deeply. Last Saturday morning, I jumped on an early flight out of the Detroit and flew to Washington and drove to Everett, and I sat at the, at the Williams kitchen table with a finely prepared board of charcuterie. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Uh, for two and a half hours, we talked about family, hockey, leadership, vision, passions, getting ice cream at Sunday Station, and the Bowling Green State University and Bowling Green community. After our meeting, I left and headed to the Angels of Winds Arena in downtown Everett to watch the Silver Tips coached by Dennis Williams. I even got my own, uh, just so you know, I did get my collector pack of hockey cards. And uh, on the back is Dennis Williams, so I got a little bit more information you know, on that. Thank you for that, appreciate that. You know, we always have to have props at press conferences. Um, that night I flew the red eye back to Detroit I had a long flight to think about Dennis Williams and what he could do for Bowling Green and the Falcons. It is time, Falcons forward. We found someone who's truly committed through his career to our purpose, a relentless commitment to improvement, innovation, and success, and he is a Falcon. In 2020, Dennis Williams received a call from the athletics director. Dennis has served as interim for a year after, and after the termination of the previous coach. He received a call and says, Dennis, you won't be getting this opportunity to be our head coach of Bowling Green. And so started the road to redemption. A road of grit, determination, persistence, innovation, and success. He challenged himself and his family, Texas, Washington, traveling the world with Team Canada. Today, different AD, same location. I'm calling you, Dennis. Hey, Dennis, you've made your case. There's no room for doubt. You are the next head coach of, Bowling, of the Bowling Green State University Falcons. Thank you, Dennis, Holly, Emerson, Elise, for travel, the road that you, that you went on together, for everything that you did put yourself in this position. Your journey has brought you home. I'd like to introduce the ninth coach of Bowling Green State University, Dennis Williams.
Well, those were uh, very nice words, and uh, Derek, and very uh, humbling time right now uh, for my uh, family and I. We've uh, it has been a long journey, and one that we're very uh, ex excited about. And uh, before I get into that, and, and kind of give a update on on how I view this group, and I got to meet with the team this morning, which was the most important thing for me, was to get to meet these guys real quick. I know it was short, but it was something that I, I wanted to make sure that they understood where I was coming from. And um, But before I begin that, um, special thanks to President Rogers for this opportunity. I enjoyed our call, uh, your vision, uh, what to, to be able to, to, to follow from afar what you've done with this campus is, is absolutely uh, fantastic. And without your support uh, for the hockey program, it wouldn't be where it is today or where it's going to be going as well. So thank you very much uh, for your continued support as well. Um, Derek, um, it, uh, it went fast, as, we, as you discussed. Um, a true man of ambition, uh, passion, energy. I, I, uh, I said to my wife, Holly, I'm not sure if he's seen that side really of me yet, but I think we, we our values, I definitely know line up, and I know our care for Bowling Green Hockey is at, at the highest level. And, and uh, after our first conversation, I knew right away uh, to form a partnership with you to get this program, as we said, as we look forward, is um, it's going to take a, a number of people but uh, with yourself at the helm in the athletic department um, was a big selling point of how I felt so confident about where it's going. So I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. I look forward to working along with you and, and continue to build uh, the Bowling Green State University hockey program. Um, Deputy Athletic Director um, uh, Stacy Kosiak, thank you for all your time. I, I know you're here. You, you, you've sent me a ton of text messages. As Derek said, I'm on the West Coast. so. I believe, Derek, you and I have texted from 2.30 in the morning your time, maybe, or 3. Uh, Stacy, the same thing. I really appreciate all the time you've put in to help prepare us for, for this day. Scott uh, Slater, I, I really appreciate your time last night. We had a short um, uh, discussion. I learned some about Scott last night in terms of uh, his bowling. So if we ever go for team bowling, I'm bringing in one guy with me, and it's Scott Slater here was telling me his uh, bowling record and score. But obviously with your... Uh, with what you've been able to do in, 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 in your uh, uh, advancement of our hockey program and support, it, it doesn't go unnoticed, and, and we don't take it for granted as well, as I said to you on the phone last night, and I can't thank you enough for your continued support, and what's going on at the hockey arena is just phenomenal, and uh, again, thank you for everything you've done for our program. The uh, alumni in the community, it's so great to see so many people. Uh, the last 48 hours, um, my phone's been blowing up with past uh, Hockey players, community members, faculty members, uh, going through it all. It's been such a, uh, um, an unbelievable experience. And I probably have a number I got to get back to still here. But I, I do uh, appreciate everybody reaching out in this time and, and welcoming my family and I uh, here to, to uh, Bowling Green. Um, I do want to uh, recognize the uh, Everett Silver Tips uh, in the Western Hockey League. They're, the owner, Mr. Bill Yule, was, uh, was kind of... It's a tricky situation at this time of year. And as I said to the players, um, this was a job I've, I've always wanted. And um, with our team still playing in the playoffs, having um, uh, you know, his, his um, understanding uh, to let me to come back to Bowling Green to a special place and, and continue to coach the Everett Silver Tips as game ones tomorrow is, is just an unbelievable person that he is. And I think he deserves to be recognized for uh, his understanding and his support for knowing that this was a path I wanted to take and not so much just myself, but my family's path we wanted to take. So uh, to Mr. Yule and the Everett Silver Tips, I, I'd like to pay um, uh, special recognition to them for, for allowing this. Um, as well as to the players of Everett uh, as well. It, it, and as I said to these young men here in front of me, you'd have the same uh, understanding if, if the if it was on the other, if the shoe was on the other foot. And, and I said to these guys, I would never, ever lead this group of young men. And the same thing back in Everett. So those players are going through a lot. I appreciate their understanding. And uh, obviously, I appreciate what's, what has really gone on here in the last couple of weeks, starting with the staff that's been in place here at Bowling Green. Um, they've done an unbelievable job. The players have done an un unbelievable job. Because when there is change, there is anxiety. There's, there's nervousness. There's the uncertainty. And the way these young men have handled it, the way the staff has handled it uh, has been a terrific job. 
uh, throughout that. So thank you to, to all those that have been a part of that. Uh, to Holly, Emerson, and Elise, uh, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> I don't know no other way to put it. Uh, you know. It's, it's, uh, there's probably a bet on this back in there, I know you can't do, but everyone would be saying right now, there's a good chance Willie's going to be crying today. Uh, <laughs> And uh, but the, but you guys have been been so I've been I've been so lucky I'm the luckiest guy out there. Um, we as Derek said you, we've gone through so much and our, our travels and being able to pick up as a family and support what what I love to do is I can't thank you three enough and this is a big big move for our family with the age of our of our daughters right now. But we also discuss we know this is a great place to raise a family and a great school district and a great opportunity for, for all of us and, and not just myself. So I, uh, I, I can't thank you guys enough. I love you to death and um, I, you look great in orange girl. So I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really excited that uh, you know you guys are on board with me here. So thank you very much um, from there. Uh, so why, the question I got asked a lot is why, why college hockey? Okay, so I know a lot of people know what the Western Hockey League is in the CHL, and it's the opposite side. Two, two different avenues, two different branches where you battle for, for players, you recruit players. And so I, I got that question a lot lately, and um, the, the, the question was easy for me. It's, it's not college hockey, it's Bowling Green. And I made that really clear when I talked with Derek. And, um, you know, it was, it, this is a real special place. And, and there could be a ton of other schools that would call at the same time and offer me the same opportunity, and it would be a quick no. And, but when Bowling Green, you know, opportunity came available, right away it, it struck a, a, a real part to, to my heart. And, and uh, I've spent seven years here at, at Bowling Green. Um, as, a, as a player, I learned so much. As a coach, I learned so much. Our oldest daughter, Emerson, she was born in Bowling Green um, here. We celebrated her first birthday in the uh, lounge area, we remember. So we told her we're going to have to redo all those photos that we took with her back in the day and show her around what, what she missed at that time. But, you know, the, the, the path to where we want to go is it's not clear. And, and as Derek said, my path here, I came in as a player, uh, it's unbelievable to see uh, Buddy Powers, who, who, coached, who coached me uh, when I was here, and, and forever indebted for him to give me this opportunity. And, and you know, as, as I go through as a player, Buddy Powers, Wayne Wilson, Brian Hills were my coaches, and they taught me values and who I am today. I didn't realize it at that point what they were doing. I didn't realize you know, what they were trying to get through. It wasn't until years after when, when you start to mature what they were really trying to teach you. And the life lessons that Buddy, Wayne, and Brian taught me, you know, were the perseverance, the, the compete, the grind. Um, it, was, it was an unbelievable. And I was a fourth liner, you know. So um, I had to grind my way all the way through. But the constant support from those three taught me how I would evolve into a coach much later on. When I came back as a volunteer uh, coach and assistant coach. I worked under Scott Pollock, who's here, and uh, Scott and I are great friends. And you know, he he taught me h how to handle the game management. It was my first real understanding of uh, from becoming a player to a coach uh, the different um, parts of the game. He taught me compassion. He taught me family uh, importance as we were just starting our family, Holly and I. And and so as I go through it and thought back about my time in Bowling Green. It was such a great, such great memory, such great influencers I had. And then to be back here, to see them today here, it's a very surreal moment um, because all those guys had such significant parts of who I am today in such a positive uh, fashion. So um, thank you to, to Buddy and Scott that are here, uh, Wayne and, and Brian. Um, you know, it's, it's a, and, and that's where it, as a coach, I don't think we realize the impact you can have on a player. And, and, it's, and it's easy, and, and that's one thing I've always learned as I move forward, as I said to these young men today, it was, is it's, it's gonna be a process. 
you know. We can't worry about an outcome right yet. You know, we got to work on how do we get better. I'm not a goal setter. I don't set goals for players. We set missions so we can keep tweaking them and keep moving through them. Uh, but I know for these players, they, um, they, they, they want to win. You can see it in the meetings. You can see it in their eyes, right, when you're talking to them. Uh, they show it up, sharp dressed today, right? They were looking at you, sitting upright, good, good young men. Re they're, ready to, they're, they're ready to go. They're ready for the next chapter. They do great in school. So many positives with them. And for, for myself and, and my vision and how we want to play, and then as I said to the, to, to the team today, it's really important that we as a group form a, 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 a identity. You know, our, our identity is so important. Who we are and how we form that is by our values. And I talked to them about that. And our values will be something I have personal values, but we're going to make them as a team collectively. And we're going to live by those values. And we want to be a positive impact, not just on the ice, but also on campus and in the uh, community. It's, and it's a two-way street, I told them. You know, we want to do our best to put a great product on the ice so our fans, our alumni, our, our community, our donors want to come to the rink. And, and for us, we also got to give back on that product. And, and uh, with that, with the guys, we just talked about how we plan to play. And, and I, when I asked them, it was like, like typical teams, one, I believe one person said one of the non-negotiables or, or we talked about things that we control was communication. And then when I asked them a question, nobody spoke. So that was kind of an awkward moment. But the guys did a really good job, the team, of, of coming up with how things we control. And, 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 and we talked about that. We control our body language. We control our play without the puck. We control our discipline. Right? We control our attitude or work ethic. And if you do that every night, I told them, the score will be a byproduct because we've done everything right in the process. If we worry about an outcome of a score, you're going to be severely uh, disappointed because that's the only thing you can hang your hat on at the end of the night. So for me, the way I like to coach and run is that it's the process. It's the journey of it, right? And you've got to be able to enjoy that part. And at the end, yeah, we play to win a game. We're, we're in a profession. I'm in a profession that we get evaluated in a lot of fashions, but really at the end of the day, it's by a result base. That's what we coaches do. Um, but in the meantime here, our priority is academic still. I've had uh, both my undergraduate and graduate work done here. So I value that at the highest level because at the end of the day, that is the importance. Along the way, I talk to them, I hope they have the same goals of being pro hockey players. Right? We want to continue to recruit players that want to be pro hockey players. And along that path, they're going to get their college degree. They're going to do great in academics. They're going to do great in the community. They're going to do great on campus. And then when they leave here, they're going to put that uh, degree in their, in their pocket and try to go play. And it's our job as a, as a coaching staff to help them live that dream. And, and for us, that's what I love to do. Because I think if we can make our players better, the team gets better. Right? And, and to me, it's the investment in, in, in our players. And I'm a true believer of that. I've been of that since day one. If you talk to anybody, I, I, I don't set goals for a team. But what I do want to make sure is that these players are set when they leave Bowling Green, both on and off the ice, to be mature young men that will take the next steps in whatever route they go in hockey and life and business and know that when they come back to Bowling Green, they would have appreciated the same way that I appreciated the coaching that I got when I was here and the support that I got when I was here. Um, is there a challenge? Are we going to win every game? No. We'll try. Um, I can promise you that. But what I want to make sure is that everybody knows when they leave the game from Slater Ice Arena that this team has given its all. We'll be relentless on pucks. Right? We'll pursue everything. We'll be loose puck recovery team. We're going to worry about all our play without the puck to start. All right? And to me, when we have that relentlessness, when we work on skill development, the rest will take care of itself. But I can promise you one thing. Our staff will outwork any staff. Our players will outwork any team. And at the end of the day, we'll let the puck fall where it falls. And I'm a true believer of that. And it's going to take time. But what I ask during this process is continued support because I know the players are going to give it their all. 
and I can't wait to get working with them and get get to meet them on on a on a uh, team basis because I do truly believe that this program is ready to take those next steps. And as uh, Derek mentioned, I love challenges. Throughout my whole career, I've taken them from the North American League to the USHL to um, uh, the Western Hockey League. Um, I'm sure some of you might have saw we had a big hiccup with the World Junior Team when we lost to Czechia at Game 1. Um, not a really good thing for all of Canada at that time. And uh, I had to answer all those questions up there. But like anything, we overcame that. And, and perseverance um, and, 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 and um, uh, situations like that game in Czechia, situations like I've gone through in terms of my, my development path, is only given me the opportunity to grow. And, and I think for our players, failure is going to be part of our growth. And then we're going to learn from that and keep moving on. So for me, I'm so excited about the challenge. Um, I can't wait to, to be able to get my family entrenched back here in, in Bowling Green. It is, like I said, a very special part of our lives. Uh, it's so great to see so many people out here. I thank you for taking the time today uh, to, to join us. And, and um, I can't tell you enough how excited we are to, uh, to be back here at Bowling Green. It's been a full circle for me. And, and my family. So um, this this was the time. It was the right time. And I truly believe the last 20 years or 15 years I've been gone, it's only served me uh, to this opportunity because of, of of all the areas and the highs and lows I've gone through. That I'm now ready to really help project this program to where it needs to be. And as I said to Derek, it's it's going to take passion. It's going to take commitment. And it's going to take all of us. It's not just coaches. It's just not players but we're going to be all one, and I believe in that. I'm going to be involved as much as I can, obviously, in giving back and seeing in the community and seeing on campus because I truly believe in that. And if anything you ever need uh, for myself, I know this morning I was introduced as Dennis and then switched to Willie. To Willie. I go by Willie. Um, my players will call me that. You're free to call me that. Uh, but what you see is what you're going to get with me. I'm, I'm blue-collar, hardworking. And I have a, such a supportive, loving family, and we're so excited to be part of Bowling Green. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity, and uh, we look forward to get going shortly. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. We're going to open it up to uh, questions for the media for uh, Athletic Director Derek Vandermeer and new head coach Dennis Williams. Uh, we have members of the Strategic Communications Office, Kyle Edmond and Kenna Hancock on each side with microphones. So please, if you have a question uh, for e uh, either on the podium, uh, please get their attention and we will go to the microphone. So. Um, first question, I think over here we got, uh, also please introduce yourself and your media outlet prior to any questions. So we'll go with Chase over here. Uh, Coach Chase Bachman, WTOL 11, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, Coach, I, I know Derek gave his uh, perspective of this hiring process. I just wondered if you could maybe give a little bit more of your uh, perspective of this whole process, obviously with everything that's gone on in the last few weeks, it's been you know a very quick process. So I just wanted maybe your perspective of all that. Yeah. Uh, this is on uh, the uh, the process was was uh, it was fast you know and it was you know Derek had a, um, a mission to to get a coach in here and uh, he relayed that out uh, to me and and we're upfront and honest throughout it all there's there was no hidden agendas and it was a job that uh, obviously I, I wanted and I, I expressed that you know quite quickly to, to, to Derek on it and uh, from a Zoom call, and, and then uh, I had the opportunity to meet with, with President Rogers for uh, an hour and, and talk about campus and where the program's going. And then uh, really, I think what, what really got me excited was when Derek flew out to Everett, you know, and it was two hours, as he said, and, and it, was, it was a good opportunity for me to just, and, and probably for Derek, I don't want to speak for him, but just to get to know him and, and uh, sit at my house and and talk casually and uh, throughout it and at that point I remember when he left I, uh, I said to my wife Holly I said you know this is this is someone I, I could I could work for and, and work with and uh, 
it was it was uh, it was a no brainer at that point for me. Although at that time I still didn't know <laughs> where where it was at. So I when I got the call the next day it was it was a very very nice call to have. Follow up from Chase. Yeah, I'll just do another one. I, let that subside. Uh, just what is it going to take to get this program back to where it needs to be? You know, competing in the NCAA tournament, winning conference championships. What needs to happen to get back to that point? Yeah, it's going to take a uh, collective effort. It's going to take um, time, but I don't know how long. You know, it's, uh, I. I I think there's a team, I know there's a team in there. Now, how do we as coaches get it out of them? You know, and I think that's what's really important. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned to the players today, uh, and, 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 I, and I should mention, like, we're not gonna disrupt the whole apple cart. That's not our intentions. Our, our, my intention is to come in here and, and um, continue to find out what has worked well, what challenges we need to get better at uh, off it, and then really, <clears throat> To me, my philosophy is let's get these players better. If we do that, we're going to win more games off that. Uh, and 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 for me as well, it's 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 going to take players getting better, our recruiting. Uh, we have to be visual. We have to be on it. We got to start getting into the game of recruiting players at a and identifying them at a right age and being able to follow track them. Um, there, there's 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 a few elements there for sure, but not ones that I think that are are to a point where I'm concerned about, you know, off it. And 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 at the end of the day, the best part about hockey to me is you got to drop the puck and play. And and I've seen. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, through the times I've seen is I, I've seen a lot of teams be able to perform with proper structure, proper buy-in, belief. Believe you're a great hockey player, you know, and, and we as coaches have to get that out of them, you know, and make sure that no matter what comes at them that, hey, we're, we're, we're a good hockey team. And uh, I, I just think with the recruiting and, and the players we have in place right now, that in the staff, like everything's moving in the right direction. And I, and I said this to Derek, I'm not a coach that lives in the past, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to sit here and, and talk about, do, is, every team has deficiencies when it comes to recruiting, so how, how do you get around those hurdles? You got you got to problem solve. You'll be a forward thinker. You got to you got to look at different areas. So for me, um, I'm excited about the challenge. Is it a challenge? Yep. Yeah. Is is there an expectation? Yes, there is. Is there an expectation for myself? No one puts a higher expectation on myself than, than what I do. And and my biggest thing is wanting to be able to put a product on that ice that like I said the community, the campus will love, they love the style of play, and that this boils over into league play, and, and then from there, as I said to the guys, if we worry about a national championship right now, or, or a national level, we're focusing on the wrong things. All right, we can't climb the mountain without getting up certain steps. So we're, we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna go up the rough side, because that's the best side. So when you get to the top, you know, it's a lot nicer. So we're not gonna take the smooth side up, we're gonna, we're gonna keep battling through it. Hi, Coach. Nicole Weaving, BCSN. You kind of started to touch upon it there, but how do you see that recruiting, especially in the current landscape of college hockey, will differ from, say, what you're used to within the path that the WHL presents? Yeah, great question. It's kind of the same, <laughs> to be honest. We, we got to recruit at a younger age and, um, and continue to, to um, at that time, when we do our draft, uh, obviously colleges then can get in and, and start to uh, get after our players in the Western Hockey League. But... It, it is a battle. The recruiting landscape has changed. And um, for myself, I've been out of it for a little bit. And one thing I said to Derek, I, I think I'm a quick learner on it. Obviously, I'm going to also rely on, on finding uh, the right person that can go and, 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 and be someone on the road and, and find these athletes and, and do a good job. And not so much as athletes, but good character young men. You know, I think that's the most important thing. And so for us, you know, you, you, have, you have everything new now with the transfer portal, you know, coming into play. And uh, that's all new to me since I was here years ago. And, uh, but I've also followed that from afar and know that those present 
challenges sometimes, but also opportunities. So for us, I feel that with how we're going to play, our envision of how we plan to coach this team, I feel confident that players will will enjoy that and want to stay here and play here. And I think that will also attract players because we're doing things right. And, and so from our standpoint, uh, there will be a learning curve for sure uh, out of it. It's not a concern to me, but also I know that that's one area that I'll I'll uh, continue to improve on, but in the meantime, I'm going to rely on certain resources off of that. Ben over here. Yeah, Ben Shannon, Central Tribune. Coach, you become the seventh coach to ever coach major, junior, and college hockey. What does that mean to you to be such an oddity and specialty in the college or in the college hockey world? The seventh. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. <laughs> There's not too many that do it, I guess, eh? <laughs> Yeah, uh, ho hockey's hockey, you know, and uh, whether you, and I learned that kind of when I went to the North American League, you know, I, I, I just wanted to be a coach, and I, I took that job, and, and I look at when I took that path, that it, it led me to, to uh, Amarillo, then up to Bloomington, and then to Everett. That owner that I worked for in Everett owned all three teams, so I think if I didn't take that job in Amarillo, where would I be? I've never had a chance to coach the Canadian World Junior Team. And, and, and to me, when you play college hockey, when you grew up in this environment, and I had options when I was back at 15, 16, to go to the OHL at that time and play major junior, and all my buddies did, but I stuck to coming to uh, Bowling Green, and, and I laugh because I, my dad still has a letter that he typed up, and I think it was to Wayne Wilson thanking him for our visit. And it was on an old Commodore 64, I think it was at the time. He still has the letter, and uh, we talk about it. And, uh, but, you know, to come back, like to me, it, and I, say that I, say, I would say this when I was in Everett. Every path is different for every, every player. You know, I, I can't tell a player that this is the ultimate path or the ultimate way. And I would say the same when I was in Everett recruiting. I'd lose players to college hockey, and I'd congratulate them. You know, that's great. If that's the right path for you, then... I'm okay with that. Like I don't. So to be able to, to come back, uh, I know not a lot of people have done it. Uh, obviously, it is uh, exciting, you know, because this is one area I've coached in a lot of leagues and I've been fortunate enough to have success, which tells you I've been able to be around a lot of great people, you know, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players. They they help. They they're the ones that make you win, you know, is, is your staff and support. And um, so for me to come back, this is obviously near and dear to my heart, but also something that is a challenge that I, I, I don't have in my resume. And, and, and I, I, I couldn't turn down the opportunity to come back to Bowling Green. It just, it's, it is the best opportunity I've, I've had. And uh, I know it, it's gonna be a, a great experience. And as I said, my job, no matter what, is to make sure that this program's in a better place when, whenever whenever the time comes that I'm, I'm not here any longer. But right now, my focus is completely on this group. Got David over here. Hi, Dennis. Dave Briggs, Toledo Blade. Obviously, one of the things that jumps out is having the opportunity to coach Team Canada for the World Juniors, coach the best of the best in the world. What did that honor mean? And what did, I guess, how did that maybe help prepare you for this kind of opportunity? Yeah. Well, it's, it's the highest honor in junior hockey. And um, I never would have thought it uh, at the time. It was, at that time, my proudest moment was being named head coach of the Canadian World Junior Team. And um, I can tell you, I wouldn't have had the success if I wasn't an assistant the year before to learn from Dave Cameron, the head coach. Um, you know, lessons and, and, and um, you know, from that event prepared me of what to expect, but it, it didn't prepare me for that loss. And I, I'm glad I had that loss. As much as I want to go seven and zero in that event, I learned a lot in that 24 hours that no one can tell you or teach you. You had to go through it. And um, I remember walking home and having dinner with Holly and the girls and, you know, TSN's all over me. All of Canada, you couldn't go out in Halifax, and you know, you, and it was a day off, so we didn't even have practice. We didn't even play the next day, so it wasn't like we had an opponent we could get right back on the ice and drop that. 
And, uh, and to make things worse, you're in a microscope. So we didn't practice the next day. And everyone questioned why I didn't practice. Well, we had a schedule, we had a routine, we had a plan, we had a process. And they're like, what do you mean you're not practicing? You know, you guys need to practice, just lost five one to, to, to uh, check you, but we stuck to it. We had a great team meeting. Um, we laid and hashed out what we wanted and, and where we're at. I think, to be honest, we, it was a great team. And if, if you obviously you followed it, is, is that it was a team that had a lot of high-end players, Connor Bedard, Shane Wright, all of them, you go through them. And I think a lot of us, and, and we're probably reading too much about themselves, we talked about. And so social media was done. Everything was done from that point. We had to get back to the, to the grassroots of working hard and understanding. So it was a real good lesson for myself that I'll, I'll take on, on to here to Bowling Green because you can't prepare for that. There's no book for that. And uh, I'm real glad at the end of the day, we went six and one, I think it was. And um, personally, I'm glad I, I had to go through that. Hi, Dennis. Michael Burwell with the Toledo Blade. I guess just what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself as a coach, you know, from the last time you were here in BG as an interim uh, until now? Oh, patience. I think maturity. Um, understanding that um, there's, it's more than a game. You know, you're dealing with young men that you're impressionable to them. They, they need to grow uh, off it. I think 20 years ago, it was all about, you know, I'm not even sure probably 20 years ago. I just know 20 years ago, I was not as good as a coach as I am now because I just think of, of I, I was young. You know, I, I, I thought I knew, you know, and, and I still don't know everything. I'm still learning. You know, I still want to grow myself and, and, and take in new ideas uh, off it. But I, I know one thing for sure is, is take away the tactical side and, and all that. That's, that. that's not the issue. I think more from a person, how to communicate, uh, how to have those conversations, how to hold players accountable, how to um, you know, go through the, the tough times of a player. I've, I've had the opportunity you know, to be a top player and I've also been a fourth line player, fifth line. So I've kind of gone through it all where I think my experience of that now I can really relate that to players and and know that I always tell them, you know, it's important to be comfortable, being getting comfortable at being uncomfortable if you want to grow, you know, off it. And and uh, but it's it's been it's been a journey, and it's been a great journey. And I can tell you, when I left Bowling Green at that time, I was I was distraught. Like I I that was the first time that if I've never been cut for a team and I've never been let go from a coaching position. So I didn't know how to handle that. And another opportunity to, to look back at that, it, you know, helps me for this position. It was having to go through that and humbling to go down to Amarillo, Texas to find a job in the Texas Panhandle. Like I'm from outside of Toronto, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. And I'm thinking, okay, the only job I can find is in Texas right now. And, uh, but lo and behold, it was an unbelievable experience. I would never trade that for anything in the world. Our youngest daughter, was born down in Texas, Elise, so we have great ties down there. And, and um, your, your journey is your journey, and it's what you do with it. And, and I'm a true believer that 20 years ago, I probably didn't understand that, but now, now that's how, how I look at things. Uh, Steve Iwanek, Falcon Media. Coach, Derek talks all the time about having his teams create a village that connects back with their community directly. How do you kind of envision the hockey's program's plan to kind of create that village with the community here in BG? Yeah, well, we, I, I can tell you, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, at the end of the day, it, it, to be an athlete here, there's a responsibility. And to me, it's not just the on ice, there's a whole nother segment to, to being a Bowling Green hockey player and a Bowling Green athlete is that you have responsibilities and, and we will be visible on campus. I'm a big believer in that. I've been a big believer in all the teams we're at in terms of community work, giving back, lots to be thankful for. And we can't take things for granted. And there's a lot of people that could use our support, no different than we'd like support 
I, I always say to our players that in terms of fan support, but it's a two-way street. There's got to be a partnership, and, and we're going to be involved in on campus at events that are obviously that are um, uh, in, in a timeline with, with our practices and how we got to operate our side of things. But I want to make sure our players are visible out there, and not only just on campus, but in Bowling Green. I think it's really important for the community to see our players out, as well as our um, our, uh, our, uh, our college students as well. We have time for one more question. Anyone else? All right, thank you. This concludes the press conference. Uh, media, if you want to make your way over to the backdrop over there, we'll have some uh, one-on-ones with Coach Williams. Thank you. You got off easy. I thought they were going to get you more. <laughs>